Hey guys, so we've talked a lot about Ukrainian, Baltic, Central Asian, Russian, Georgian, and even Polish food. But there still remains the elephant in the room. But, but I, I guess it's more like a bear riding a tricycle? And I'm talking, of course, about Soviet food. Для тех, кто выжил в СССР, название моего канала может показаться провокационным. Но моя цель вспомнить и может пошутить и посмеяться на готове и пробуя эти странные, старые, ужасные советские блуда. Поверьте, я всего лишь обжора. Я не коммунист. Soviet cuisine might actually be a bit of an oxymoron. It's because they did considerable damage to food culture. They destroyed regional dishes through collectivization, and they banned the Tsarist dishes in Russian high society. contribution the Soviets made to food culture was that of canned foods. While a lot of them were seen as luxury items, saved for special occasions or guests, most of them were just kind of for basic survival. So a lot of these canned goods are a little less beluga caviar and a little more MRE meets dog food. So pack your barf bags because we're going to take a little trip down memory lane with the canned foods of the Soviet Union. For this little edible experiment, I've tried my best to duplicate the canned goods available within the Soviet Union. While the quality and diversity of canned goods today is far greater, I have intentionally purchased cheaper than usual options, or ones more in line with Soviet appearance and quality. Additionally, as I mentioned before, canned goods were a bit of a luxury, especially in the final years of the Soviet Union, as scarcity and lack of foodstuffs were more pervasive. So while this experiment is interesting, it's more to entertain a curious Western audience than it is an accurate duplication of what was actually available to people in the Soviet Union. In order to streamline things and avoid waste and repetition, I will only be sampling the stranger options, or ones likely to be less familiar to a Western audience. Nearly all of the canned goods here are fish, with the remainder being conserved meats. They range from surprisingly good foods to some of the most horrific culinary aberrations you could ever encounter. What was once a treasured Soviet delight has become an appetizer for larger meals or snacks to accompany a hard night of drinking, with some of these even having the stigma that only alcoholics or the poverty-stricken would ever even think to buy them. Oh, cheap meat! Alright, so sardines, mackerel. We've, we've all been there, nothing too exciting. Oh, cod liver. I've heard about this. Fish, meatballs, alright, whatever. Oh, sprotty or sprats. I love this stuff, but we're going to use a smaller can for sampling. And then there's bichki and kilka. Some people love this stuff. Some think it's just food for alcoholics. So I guess we'll see. Now on to the prepared meals. We have beef and buckwheat. We'll save that for another day. Pork with lentils. Sure, we can try this. Oh, ucha. I've actually made this. It can be a good soup. Oh, stewed pork. This stuff is another oddly beloved canned food. Pork in its own sauce. Not today, buddy. Pate, or pashtet, is actually quite good. While it is an acquired taste, it's a taste worth acquiring. To be honest, I don't know what the difference between all these are. The cans claim certain things, but it kinda all tastes the same when it's this cheap. Let's go with the Dessa pashtet. Now, I don't know much about caviar, so this will be interesting for me. We have pollock, cod, capelin, and salmon caviar. This is the salmon. It was substantially more expensive than the rest. The other cans were about a dollar a piece, so I'm sure this will be an elegant adventure. Sweden condensed milk. This stuff is adored here, but I've never tried it because it looks vile. Kids love it, so I guess we'll see. If we're going to eat like a Soviet, we're going to drink like a Soviet. 
While Soviet vodka isn't around anymore, probably for the better, Zhigulovskaya was the most popular Soviet beer, and it's still made by brewers even today. For this experiment, we'll be drinking a lovely Soviet cocktail. Try it if you hate yourself. It's just mixing beer with vodka. This cocktail is the reason why Russians have a saying, Pivo bez vodki, dienge na vietr. Alright, who's thirsty? Well, to document my trip into madness, and quite possibly food poisoning, I figured we'd drink this one together, guys. So, pause the channel, go get something tasty, come back, and we'll have a toast together. I'll wait. Alright, so guys, here's to canned food. Cheers. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Mm. Another part of my trip down someone else's memory lane is using this old Soviet can opener. Invented by the world's greatest engineers, it's designed to turn your can lids into the world's shittiest ninja star. I'm, uh, I, I'm already regretting this. All of the dishes in tomato sauce taste nearly identical. Nothing really too remarkable, but for sure not as bad as I was led to believe. It's acceptable, but not really desirable. However, the meatballs were slightly worse than the rest. They tasted okay at first, but then kind of became gross as you explored the texture of it. The slightly unnerving crunch of fish bones inside really didn't do it any favors. To be honest, I can't even tell this one apart from the first. I think enjoyment of it is directly related to how much vodka you've had. Now here's where things take a turn for the nightmarish. I've made this soup before and expected it to be underwhelming, if anything. What I discovered was a cloying, oily nightmare of fish soup. This is a dish that's really well loved here. I'd never tried it and was excited to, despite its horrific appearance. It, it is a little dense, but actually flavorful. To eat it as part of a larger meal and with more booze, I'm sure it would actually be great. I think this would be a nice thing to take camping. This dish is almost identical to the last, just with a gluey mush of lentils added. Definitely a downgrade. Still not too bad. No. This seems to be a love it or hate it kind of thing. It's another dish I've never tried, but was always curious about.
The taste was actually quite nice, but the texture was a little bit bizarre. Uneven and slimy, with a bit too much oil. It was a little off-putting initially, but I think this is a dish that is for sure an acquired taste. And to be honest, I'll try it again. Too hard to judge at first bite. Now we're getting to the rock stars of the canned food game. While it looks a little bit horrific, if you've never tried it, it's actually quite good. Nice texture and a subtle flavor. It makes a great spread on crackers or bread. Or maybe just my stomach has Stockholm Syndrome. This is one I have to give my recommendation to. Try it if you can. And here we have my favorite of the canned foods, chprochi. These can be found in any and every Eastern European deli on Earth and even beyond. The pride of the Baltics and a great appetizer or drinking snack. A delicacy of the Soviet Union and a good thing to keep in your pantry even today. I recommend trying this one out if you like fish even just a little bit. A plus. Good job, Latvia. Now to the caviar. I haven't tried any of these, but I guess we'll see. Well, the texture is strange, and it doesn't at all resemble fish eggs, but we'll give it a test spank. There is no way you can convince me this isn't literally cat food. In what right. scenario do you not eat the cat food? I would always eat the cat yeah, food. All right, take two. Can't be worse than the first one, right? Yo, what the fuck is up with that texture? Oh. All right, this one should be elegant. It's by far the most expensive canned food of the day, coming in at a staggering $8. This should be my reward for making it this far. The large caviar seems to burst in my mouth, releasing what tastes more like seawater than anything fish related, even with bread. I I'm unimpressed. Now on to a gooey sweet treat to finish the meal. Liquid dairy sugar. This stuff is used in baking, poured over cakes and fruit, and I've seen kids here, on more than one occasion, risk their very lives to sneak some. It's a weird texture, but yeah, I guess it tastes good. On to the judging. Here we have the tier 1 canned foods, the Soviet A-Team. But the best of the best would have to go to the little Baltic fish, Shproti, winner of the coveted Soviet Gourmand canned food challenge. Here we have tier 2, nothing really off-putting or bad, just didn't really leave an impression at all. However, I think with multiple samples I could learn to love cod liver. Tier 3, plain old not good or just deeply disappointing. Should be better than they were. Wet heave inducing culinary failures. Some of the worst stuff I've ever eaten. I wouldn't even trick my sister into eating this. And I told her puppy treats were Slim Jims. Shame on you. Well guys, maybe you learned a thing or two. Some helpful tips and insights for travelers looking to eat on the cheap or for local masochists too lazy to cook. At the very least, I hope you guys enjoyed the departure from the more legitimate dishes and were entertained watching this. What else would you guys like to see from the former Soviet bloc? Leave me any questions or suggestions in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. Until next time, eat well friends.